guess uh, you already know who we are. I'm, I'm still planting. I haven't gone anywhere. <laughs> yep, I'm still Chin. I remember my name. Uh, I haven't forgotten anyone this week, thank God. Uh, <laughs> th- th- this week we played Gem Smashers, as we were saying. It's uh, published by Funbox Media, developed by Raylight Games, and was released on November 2nd, 2018, at a price, at least on the U.S. marketplace, of twelve ninety nine. Um, TA's got it classified as an action game, although I would almost call it, like, a puzzly kind of action, depending on, I mean... Yeah, it's a tough call. It's, I mean, the gameplay is essentially Brick Break, like, but, yeah. but Brick Break, but different. So, rather than being a paddle that hits the ball, you are the ball, and you've got to bounce up and down off this around this map destroying blocks and smashing gems uh you can only smash gems of the same color of you that you are so if you're blue you can smash blue gems so you obviously need to find a piece of the world that will change your color so that you can smash the rest of the gems once you smash all the gems you can exit through the door and go to the either the next part of the level or finish off the level and go to a new set of levels um there's a there's only really one thing that'll kill you while you're playing, and that's these little skull squares. And my dogs have just decided to freak out. Thank you. Hello, Kiska. <laughs> Good interject. No. Um, so you get killed by these skull squares. It doesn't do anything. You just essentially reset to where, like the, where you started with everything still cur- in its current state. Um, if you run out of time, there's a skull ghost that comes out, but I didn't get touched by him. I imagine he kills you permanently, but is it quite like it's an easy game? I don't think that ever happened. Plain- it was good to hear you didn't get touched by him. I, I was also not touched by the evil ghosty. Like it, I guess that threat is there. You mu- see, I, we don't know what happens because we didn't fail because the game is so easy. Like, it's really... You get plenty of time. I died multiple times on multiple levels and still had more than enough time to finish it for the most part. Progress was compromised. Yeah, that's that's what they say. Progress will be compromised, which is a weird way of putting it. Because you're just... I love the way they worded The mind, The minds are dangerous if you touch them. Your progress may be compromised. It's fantastic. I mean, the gameplay is, you would assume, very simple because, as the tutorial tells you, you are to smash all the gems on screen. To do so, move the character left and right and smash all the gems. I was really confused until I started playing. It's mm-hmm. thankfully not as confusing as you might think it is. No. Um, from the plot, I don't know. They had like a storyboard opening where there's like a, a ship crash landing, uh-huh. robotic arms holding four different colors of gems. And then, like, this huge skull laughing behind a planet real ominously. I have no idea what any of that means, but there's three different characters and three different playthroughs you have to kind of at least start. I don't know how that's related, though. Oh, and now I can't remember the names of the characters. It's like, boom. I wish I wrote them down, but, yeah, I didn't. Bomb, Bor, and Bark or something. Just stupid names. Um, awkward. There's really... <sighs> The characters themselves have stats, so there's a balanced character, a fast character, and a more powerful character that will break breakable blocks in less hits. Um, really, aside from that, there's no difference except that they start as a different color. So your yellow character starts yellow and can break yellow things straight away. Um, there's not really any difference. I played through the story mode as the balanced red character. Who did you pick planting? Uh, same thing. I went with the red one the first time. Yep. Um, and yeah, like you, you do four or so levels, three or so levels, and then you fight a boss, which consists of repeating the gameplay you've done in the previous levels. And then at the end, there's a boss that has a colored weak point that you may have to change your color or you may not, and you just run into it and four or five hits, it'll be destroyed. Sort of every time you hit it, it doesn't attack doesn't really matter if you die because you just come back and hit it again it's i'd like i I don't really know why 
death was even in here if it has little to no detriment. Just as another reason, I guess, to kind of slow your progress. That's really the only thing. It's sort of like uh, there was one block that you could hit that would invert your controls. There's an achievement for smashing bricks with those inverted controls. Um, I, I guess if you look at the other achievements in Gem Smashers, there's there's 17 in total. Only one's really truly story based, which is the one for completing the entire story. Mm-hmm. There's another that's I guess you could consider story based because you have to complete the opening worlds with all three of the characters. So basically, one full playthrough and two partial playthroughs. Um, yeah. They're relatively quick. It's not particularly difficult. Worth noting that each of your characters starts on a different part of the world, so if you've done the entire playthrough once, you'll be familiar with the levels that you start on when you do the other two playthroughs. Mm-hmm. Um, some other random achievements for like smashing different numbers of gems, completing levels quickly, changing your color, grabbing the different collectibles that you can find, interacting with the blocks. There's one that's kind of an RNG achievement, but I didn't find it hard at all. I, I popped it very early in the story, which is to find a crown and a treasure chest. Oh, yeah, Um, I apparently did that quite quick as well. Must have been sometime relatively soon after the first boss for me, going by my timestamps. Yeah, it sounds about right for for where I popped it as well. I mean, for me, honestly, the hardest achievements, if you want to call them that, I mean, it's like a a three- to four-hour game, um, were, were for not dying in three consecutive levels and then for the just simply completing the entire story mode. They're not mm-hmm. difficult. They're just kind it's of... Just, yeah, these will be the hardest ones out of yeah, the whole just bunch. just because you have to play the game for an extended period of time and it's not a fantastic game to play. True. I mean, but but graphically, it is easy. I, Oh, yeah. Very, very easy. I mean, graphically, it was it was bright and colorful, but you know, nothing, nothing amazing, nothing special. So no. I guess overall, for Gem Smashers... For this price, for, you know, for for thirteen bucks, I would yeah. wait for a sale. I would too. Even even anything under ten is more reasonable for what you're getting out of it. It's a weird price point of twelve ninety nine, and I don't know. I feel like they would have gotten way more sales from it, even with just starting that three dollars cheaper. Ten dollars is no, a lot more palatable. Yeah, but. Yeah, it, it's 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 definitely fun. It's it's not a not a difficult completion. When it goes down in price, pick it up is what I'd say. But yeah, I'd, I'd wait for now. Yeah, that's I can agree with that. 